In this lesson, we shall focus on mathematics. M A T H one for one calculus, C K Z N um techniques of integration and a lot more. Okay, I depend on you for actually indicating what we need to do precisely this morning. Um, because we were finishing chapter four, and as we're finishing tutorial four. There were a couple of things that obviously we had to discuss. And so it will be very important for you to sort of uh, indicate the kinds of things that you think we need to do. Like if you look at the trick substitutions, number in, num in number one, we have the this particular question. Okay, we did this one by integration by part. We showed this one. And then number two, we did the trigonometric substitutions. Okay, and then went on to look at the trigonometric substitutions. And then let us check now. Let us check, 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 check. Went on to do three on the hyperbolic function. Um, the, the fact that the hyperbolic sine of x is the ln of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 for all x, but also we looked at the arc cosh of the ln of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. So the difference between the arc sine and the arc cosh is the x squared minus 1 for x critical to 1. Evaluate using the trigonometric substitution, hyperbolic substitution that. Use part A to show that the above answers are equivalent. Okay, we did uh, this one of 3B. So I depend on you as we're like skimming through TAT 4. When don't to look at the arc length of the lin X, we showed that it is this. The area of the surface of revolution, we showed that it is this. Number four and five, we did. Let's check. When done to look at the partial fractions, 6a, 6b, we've already done. But now, I depend on you in case you want us to revisit some of this and give them some attention. Like 6c and 6d, 6c and 6d. Six 6e and 6f. Six E and six F. Right, number three to eight, tat five. Okay, let's check. Number three to eight, tat five. Let's check the one. Here is tat five. This is tat five, and this number one. Number one, two. Two, three. Okay, let us look at number three. Let us look at number three, tat five. We're starting here. All right, let us look at uh, the first question, 3A. This one here. Now, this particular integral is a very interesting integral, but also we need to look at exactly what we need to do. We need to look at exactly what we need to do to solve this particular integral. So to evaluate this, we need to look at the fact that zero is problematic because if you put zero into the denominator, then it's going to become 
undefined. So zero is a singular point. It's called a singular point. Meaning that now you to deal to integrate from zero to infinity of dx over the square root of x one plus the square root of x. To do this one, you would have to take the limit as epsilon approaches zero from the right of zero plus epsilon to infinity dx over one plus the square root of x. You let u be one plus the square root of x. One over two dx. Okay. We just need to do the integral here. And so to do this integral, you have exactly that. So that when you have the integral of dx over the square root of x, then you have one plus the square root of x. What is dx? Two to the square of x du. Dx is two to the square of x du. The square of x, and then the this one is u. Okay. And if you check, it is clear therefore at this point that this one cancels, giving us. 2, 1 over u du. And this is 2, the ln. Which is 1 plus the square root of x plus c. <coughs> okay, we continue. So now, this is exactly what we have here. And therefore, this is the limit as epsilon approaches zero from the right. Now, the integral of this, the integral of this is to the ln one plus the modulus. Okay, and then obviously this one is zero plus that, so it's epsilon to infinity. Okay, but now the couple of things obviously that you need to take into account here. It is the fact that it is undefined here, but also it's going to be undefined up there. Or it is rather an improper integral as well. At the top. And therefore, it means that you need to take all these into account. So you need to, in essence, involve two limits. You need to involve two limits. And so, what we then need to do, you also need to involve the limit. as b approaches infinity of the limit epsilon approaches zero from the right. And then you'd have epsilon to b like this. Exactly this way. And then you have dx over the square root of x1 plus the square root of x. Meaning this is the limit. 
Okay, so we first look at this one, the inside. Because there are two things here. So the integral of this is the ln. The limit as B approaches infinity. Okay, let us check this one. So now, at this point, if you substitute everything here, it's a limit as epsilon approaches zero from the right of two the ln of one plus the square root of B minus two the ln of one plus the square root of epsilon. And then you take the limit as this approaches. Yes, please. Yes, may I ask, um, um, there by the infinity, why do we substitute B? Please come again. The by B. the infinity, why did we substitute B? Okay, why didn't we substitute B? Because, anyway. Why because... did we? Why did we put B at infinity? Okay, because um, integrals that have a limit of integration as infinity are improper because of the infinity as a limit of integration. But now, because of that, then always we must replace the B, the, the infinity by a B. Because the integral is it's an improper integral of the first kind. But again, this one is an improper integral of the second kind. So it's like two in one. Two challenges in one problem. What is the first challenge? The first challenge is if you substitute zero into the function, it's just going to become zero, the denominator. Meaning that at zero, it is undefined. Meaning it is an improper integral of the second kind. But also at infinity, it is an improper integral because of the infinity as the limit of integration. Yes. Meaning, therefore, we need to take care of both cases um, in e sets. Okay, so now think about this. So now this is what we have. In other words, this means the following. Okay, so this means that whenever we have this integral here, which is the square root of x, 1 plus the square root of x, this is equal to the limit. It equals the limit as b approaches infinity, but there's another limit as epsilon approaches 0 from the right. b approaches infinity, epsilon approaches 0 from the right. to the ln of 1 plus the square root of b. One plus the square root of epsilon. Okay, now let's take the limit. First, we take the, the limit one by one. We're gonna take the limit as a uh, Epsilon approaches zero from the right. So it's going to affect only this one, but the B is not going to be affected yet. So you have one plus the square root of B minus two the ln of one plus the square root of zero. So this one becomes zero. Meaning we have the limit as B approaches infinity, just taking it step by step. So this is the square root of zero, which is a one. Lin of 1, 0. So you're only going to be left with 1 plus the square root of b. But now we take the other limit as b approaches infinity. So it's going to be 2 the ln of 1 plus the square root of infinity. Square root of infinity is what? It's infinity. 1 plus infinity is infinity. Looking at the log graph. 
for infinity. It is clear that in the Cartesian coordinate system or in our argument diagram, this is y equals the natural log of x graph. But if we actually take the limit as x approaches infinity, this graph also approaches infinity without bounds. And therefore, this becomes infinity. And therefore, it diverges. And therefore, it diverges. Okay, think about this and see if you have a question on this kind of problem. But it is an improper integral of both kinds, like of the first kind and the second kind. The first kind is this one. The second kind is the zero, which is substituted here. It's going to make the denominator zero. So we must actually in include both cases. The B approaches infinity, but also the fact that th this function is undefined at zero, because if ever zero is the limit of integration, but if you put it here, it's going to make the denominator zero. Okay, giving us a hint of one of the challenges we need to deal with in this problem here. And we move forward. We move forward. We move forward. We move forward. So it's something that you need to take note of here, as a matter of fact. Right, you need to take note of here as a matter of fact. Okay, we need to move on to the next question and see now what to do what to do next and see what to do next okay let's look at the next one right in the next question we actually would be looking at instances where we actually obviously have a couple of cases that are important for us to take note of Right, 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 right. Now, in this problem, your teacher might use a different approach to this. Your teacher might use a different approach. Now, sometimes the most common tendency is to break it down as follows, this A part. Okay. Because we can see that there's a problem at zero, but there's a problem at infinity as well. So there are two problems in this question. Okay, there is a, an approach that is often used in the textbook for this course. Okay, it may, it's, the, it's the analysis textbook that normally I use. So you can always uh, break it down like this. You can take it zero to one, dx over, so these will be correct methods that look, look, look a bit different from each other, yet they converge in terms of the results because the results will be equivalent to each other. Okay, yeah, you can break it down like this. And then now, because of the zero, we separate, but this one is infinity, so that we have the two limits that are separated. And so when we separate now, we can see that we can deal with the limit for this one, and then we put the B this side. So we just put the number one, because at one, then if you put one here, the square root of one plus one plus the square root of one, it's, everything is okay. It, it, it's defined this. And then now you can take the limit as epsilon approaches zero from the right of zero plus epsilon. Okay zero plus epsilon, and then we have dx divided by one plus the square root of x, dx. Oh, we've put the dx already for this one. So that is another way of doing the problem because you already can see that there's the problem is at zero. So we just integrate from zero to one because we know that between zero and, and infinity, the number one is there. In principle, you can put any number, but the number one, I'm trying to emphasize um, its commonality, it's popular. That is why they even use the one here. That's why they even use the one here. So if there's a problem with these kinds of integrals, we can break it into two pieces. And then now integrate from zero to one and then one to infinity. Okay, we'll continue. 
We continue. Okay. So now then this one is going to put the B. Okay. Okay, you have this one. So this one, you already know the integral. We did it on the other side. So it's epsilon to one. And then you put the one, because you see, even in your class, they put the one here, meaning you can break these into integrals that involve the number one. So, and then when you get to this point, this one, you already know the integral is to the learn of one plus the square root of x. One to B. At this point, you substitute everything and you have the limit. Epsilon approaches zero from the right. You put the one, which is two, the ln of uh, one plus one is going to be two. Two, the ln of one plus the square root of epsilon. So it is to the learn one plus the square root of b. To the learn of two. Okay, so now you take the limits here. As the uh, epsilon approaches zero from the right, this one is going to be the square root of uh, zero, which is zero plus one. So this is going to be the lean of one, which is zero. And then you're only going to be left with tool in two. Here you have the infinity, so this one is going to be minus tool in two. Minus tool in two. And then you have this one as b approaches infinity is going to be the square root of infinity, which is infinity. The lean of infinity is going to be infinity. But obviously, if you look at tool in two minus tool in two, it's zero giving us this and giving us infinity and means that this integral here diverges. So I'm then saying, this is another way of doing it. Breaking it down to two pieces to avoid using like two limits in one problem because now there are two problems. The zero is a singular point because the function is undefined at zero, but also the infinity as a limit of integration is problematic. Why? Because this function, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, this integral is improper. It's improper. It that infinity there. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So we can break it into zero to one, one to infinity. Yeah. I hope that is clear. Correct. Okay, so let us move on to the next question. Let us move on to the next question. We look at 3B. Now 3B, the problem is two times also. The infinity makes it improper. But the one, because if you put one minus one here, it becomes zero. Meaning that we have two challenges in one problem. Right, because you have two challenges in one problem, then we need to tackle these uh, wisely. The question then is, what do we do in a case like this? Because still we have a problem. So we can use the one unit rule. One unit rule. What is the one unit rule? The one unit rule is you consider this one and just add one. One of the ways we can use is to use what we call the one unit rule. One unit rule. Okay, what is the one unit rule? 
This is one. And the problem is the number one, but one minus one is zero, making the denominator zero. So we're going to add one to one, getting a two. Like this. Okay. So you can have this. And then you add, then you have two to infinity. Dx over x, then you have the square root of x squared minus one. All right, obviously now the problem is in two places. Is that one and also an improper at infinity. In each case, therefore, you can do it twice. I mean, you can use the other first method I used, but I feel that maybe it's too cumbersome and it involves two limits that are just congested and very nested, nested limits. So meaning that you can just um, break it down like this. You can just break it down like this. Okay, now let us look at this one. The question is, what is the integral here? We need to just do the integral very fast here on the side. But to do this integral, we're gonna let. The bx squared minus one. Right, and then when we get to this point, okay. So we continue. We continue. Right, so now in continuing, you have, okay, let's first find dx. Okay, so du Right, so you have the du Okay, let us uh, see this one here. Okay, so when you're here you can see that du is equal to what? 2x dx. It is 2x dx. Okay, so now if it is 2x dx, then what are you able to achieve here? Then you come here. What is dx? dx okay <laughs> right so dx at this point okay so this one you'd have to use uh, another formula you need to use uh, another formula so you will use the following formula for the integral it can be done in those particular ways, but there is a shortcut to this particular integral because it involves it involves uh, using another formula. Okay, so yeah, that's what we are moving towards. Okay, um, I'll just uh, obviously give you now the 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 formula for that we use here to tackle this kind of a problem. So to tackle this kind of a problem, we use the arc functions. So we'd have to use those arc functions, those uh, inverse functions. And so I'm actually reverting to those just now because um, that is uh, the way to do it. Okay, so just a second, just to save time, we're going to actually use the, um, um, okay, just one second. All right, all right, all right, all right. So this one is the arc 
Okay, this one you can say, generally there is a, a formula for it, just to save time and not have to, need to know the arc formulas, which are involved the square roots. So there's a formula, and there are two formulas. First, let's just state this formula here. So whenever you have one over x, x squared minus one dx, Arc secant plus C. Um, so we'd have uh, exactly this one here. And so okay, also when you have the okay, but also when you have the arc coset integral. Okay, good. Okay, we are just one second. Just one second, I'm gonna be here. Okay, there, there are some formulas that I'm, I want to cite. Okay, this one is arc the second. Right, and so if you have a couple of other integrals, just one sec. I want to give you other formulas here that you need to know. That you need to know. Okay, so this is going to be the arc second, but I want to I want to uh, cite another formula. Just one second. Just one second. Just one second. Just one second. Okay, I will. Um, okay, I wanted to say this. Okay, there are two of these, but there's this one here and also this one. One over X x squared minus 1, if there's a negative here. If there's a negative, we then say it is arc of the cosecant of x plus c. Okay, so, right, so now we're going to use these two formulas because of the fact that we know this particular integral here. So then we're going to do the limit. Epsilon approaches 0 from the right. Right. Okay, we'll continue, please. So this one is going to be 1 plus epsilon. And then you have the limit. Now we put the B here because of this infinity limit of integration, making this integral improper, making it an improper integral. So with the limit as epsilon approaches zero, but approaches zero from the right. Okay, this integral you already know it is, because it is a, there's a sort of a plus associated with it, a plus, so you have the arc secant of x. Like that. And then it is one plus epsilon two. B approaches infinity. Two to infinity. Which is arc second of two. which is B okay so when B approaches 
when um, epsilon approaches zero from the right, you have arc second of two, arc second of two minus arc second of two is gonna become zero. Leaving us with this one, and this one is gonna be minus arc second of uh, one, when epsilon approaches zero from the right, it's gonna be arc second of one. And then you're also gonna be left with this one, arc second of infinity. Arc second of infinity. What is arc second of one? What is arc second of one? Arc second of one, there's a time when this second is one and arc second of one becomes what? Becomes a zero. Okay, just check this one out. Arc second of one is zero. Then what is arc second of infinity? When is the second infinity? So these are the things you need to check. So there is arc second of one. What is arc second of one? Arc second of one is a zero. Why? Because the second of zero is one. So arc second of one is zero. But what is arc second of infinity? Arc second of infinity, this one is actually exactly pi over two radians. So this is pi over two radians, making it finite. Making it finite. So that is something that you need to think about here. Okay, so indeed, oh, okay, they wrote pi over two also. So the answer is indeed pi over two here. But once again, it can be done like this, but I feel that this is easier. What do you call the one unit rule? You can just use the one unit rule. If you see like two problems, like the problem is at zero here and the problem is at infinity. So you add one to zero so that you integrate from zero to one, one to infinity. Here, the problem is at one, the problem is at infinity. Why is the problem at one? If you substitute one here, it becomes one minus one, making the denominator zero, meaning there's a problem here. So we're going to, Okay, let's see uh, what you're saying. Okay, how did we manage to get two for the interval? Okay, we got two by using what you call the one unit rule. What is the one unit rule? The one unit rule means that if there's a problem at, at a limit of integration, you can add one. You can add the number one to get two. Because you add the number one so that here you have one plus one one and then the next one is one plus one which is equal to two and then this one then you're going to start from two and then run up to infinity so this is the correct way to reason and i feel that this is much more standard much more standard it's called this is called the one unit rule so you add one to the problematic number the problematic number, which is one, one minus one produces zero, we're gonna add one to it. So you add one plus one, you get a two, but also here you will have, we'll have a two to infinity as well. You'll have a two to infinity. So this is called the one unit rule. One unit rule. That is how we get the two. How did you get the two? You take this number one, Add one to it to get a two. Why do you add one? We add one so you can break it into two pieces. Why do you break it into two pieces? Because it has infinity, but also there's a problem at the number one. When you substitute the number one, the denominator becomes zero, meaning you need to take care of both of these. You need to take care of both of these. You need to take care of both of these. Okay. 
So let us see now what we can do. So now we're going to move to the next question. The next problem is problem C. But in problem C, we have two problems. So to integrate this one here, which is two minus X, to so integrate this one here, there are two problems. One is at one. Because if you put the number one here, it's gonna be one minus one. The denominator becomes zero, yeah? So there's a problem at one. But it's a problem at infinity also. So you must use the one unit rule. You must use the one unit rule. What is the one unit rule? Because this number is one is the biggest number. You must minus one from one. Minus one from one. If you minus one from one, what you get? You get a zero. Mean that you would have to integrate from minus infinity to zero. And then you have one minus x. You have two minus x, then you integrate from zero to one using the one unit rule. And this is what you're able to achieve. Okay, here we're using the one unit rule. Like this. Okay. All right. Now, what is then the integral here? So you need to look at this integral and think. And see what this integral is. Okay, because now you manage to break it into two pieces like this by the one unit rule, because now the problem is at one, and one is the biggest one. You're gonna add one, but you can't add one to one because it's gonna become two. And two now, this is the upper limit, it's the greatest one you can integrate up to. So you can't go up to two. You can take a number in the middle, but between minus infinity and one on the number line, if you have minus infinity and one on the number line, there is a number, there is a number zero. Between a negative number and a positive number, there is zero there. When you are running from the, the through the negative numbers, minus two, minus one, then there is a zero and then a one. So, it's something to think about. Okay, we we'll continue, sorry. So now, but now the next thing is we need to think about the integral. The question is what is this integral here? Okay, this one, you need to evaluate it by substitution. You need to evaluate it by substitution. And the way to do it, you can just simply let. You can let u be what is under the square root. Be 1 minus x. So that du is minus dx. And then you'll have the integral of dx, which should be minus du divided by, here it's going to be, the square root of this, which is u to the one half. Two minus x, two minus x is what? So if you have u is one minus x, then you can add u plus one. 
plus 1 minus x. Or you can just make x the subject of the equation. So u plus 1 is 2 minus x. So wherever there's 2 minus x, you put u plus 1. Like this. And then you have this. The question is, what is this integral here? Okay. So this integral here is, okay, let us check this integral, please. And then we shall continue. So it is one over the square root of one minus X. And then you have two minus X. You have two minus X. Okay. Right, so you need to think of the right substitution to integrate this. And one of the ways you can use to actually integrate this is exactly what? You can use the tangent. So this would be arc tangent. It will be arc tangent. So you can use this. It's going to be 3 over 2, and then you do the 1 half. Okay, yeah, let's just use that one. So we can use the substitution that says u is the square root. What is this? Let's find a derivative of this. which is one over two, one minus x, dx. So you find uh, this integral here. And then if you find this integral here, which would be du, one over two u, dx. Okay, let us just do the integral for now. Because uh, it's going to involve a little bit more work. So you have the dx 1 minus x 2 minus x. Okay. Um, To deal with this integral then, we're going to have exactly the u here. And then you have the two minus x. Okay, what is two minus x? You square both sides from this point. Getting u squared is one minus x. Meaning x is one minus u squared. Wherever there is x, you put one minus u squared. What is the x? Which is 2u du. So you have this one. <laughs> you have 2 minus 1, which is 1 plus u squared. These two cancels giving us two du over one plus u squared. Aha. Uh -huh. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. So what is this? If you start from here, 
you'd have two octane of u plus c. That is the integral. Two octane. What is u? It's exactly this. One minus x plus c. Okay, so this is the answer. Okay, but now check. So the derivative of this is going to have a negative. Going to have a negative. Negative. And then it's going to have a negative. It's going to have a negative. Okay, then you have this answer. <laughs> so this is the answer. For, uh, okay, it's not the final answer yet, but it is just the integral that we need to get. So it is minus two octane u plus c. Okay, we take this one. We already know the integral now. In other words, using what we call the one unit rule, we integrate from minus infinity to one dx over one minus that two minus x, which is minus infinity to zero, dx divided by the square root of one minus x, two minus x, zero to infinity, divided by one minus x, two minus x. Okay, so we know this integrals already. So the problem here is at infinity and the problem here is, yeah, well, it's at minus infinity because minus infinity is, make the, it makes the integral improper, we must use B. And also we actually have that, we must, we have a problem at one because there's one minus zero. So we're gonna, hey, okay. I mean here from zero to one. from zero to one. So using the one unit rule to separate this integral, to so break it into, into pieces, you need to integrate from minus, from minus infinity to one minus one. Meaning you have the limit You have B approaches infinity with minus B to zero. Dx over one minus X, two minus X. Okay, here then, because the problem is at one, <clears throat> you must use epsilon. Epsilon approaches zero from the right, and then it's zero, you have one minus epsilon, dx divided by the square root. Two minus x. Okay. What is the integral here? The limit as b approaches infinity. What is this integral? Let's check. 
We already said the integral is minus two. Act and you. But I wanted to also say here, it's minus two act and the u is the square root of one minus x plus c. So that is minus two act and one minus x. zero and then you have the limit epsilon approaches zero from the right so which means that minus two octane of one minus x Zero to one. Uh, one minus epsilon, yeah? Okay. Okay, now let's substitute the limits. Acton, if you put zero here, it's gonna be acton one. Because there is a minus, then it's gonna be plus. Two, acton, if you put in the place of x here, it's gonna be minus minus b, which is gonna be positive, one plus b. The limit, epsilon approaches zero from the right. Actan. You put, yeah, in the place of x, you put one minus epsilon here. One minus epsilon, but it's one minus one, it's gonna be zero, giving us only epsilon. Zero. Plus two. Actan of one. Okay, if you put infinity here, what is actan of one? Actan of one is 45 degrees using calculator, pi over four radians. And if you come here now, you put infinity here, it's gonna be actan of infinity, because if you put infinity in the point of B, it's gonna be infinity plus one, infinity. Actan of infinity is pi over two radians. Okay, minus that. Our turn of zero is zero. Okay, let's see now what we're getting. This is this minus two pi over four and the two pi over four they give us zero and this one would give us exactly zero and then we're left with this one two cancels giving us pi. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. So right, this pi at uh, this pi is this infinity, so which means that the integral converges. The integral converges. Any question about? The C. The C was a little bit tricky. What was tricky about it? Well, I mean, the pattern of two types of integrals, integrals, improper integrals of the first kind and improper integrals of the second kind. So improper integral of the first kind. If 
Improper integral of the first kind. Improper. Of the second kind. Uh, so, okay, so now we have the following, yeah? That is answer. Think about it and make sure that you're able to understand what is happening here. Right, make sure that you're able to understand what is happening. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make sure able to understand what is happening. Yeah. I'm having my class now. Um, yeah. Can you please text me because I'm having my class now. T yeah. I'm speaking to someone. Yeah. Please text me uh, because I'm having my class so that I can understand your problem or your challenge so that I can see, I can see how we can, we can assist. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, we continue, please. I'm just uh, trying to attend to speak to this person here, uh, because now they just uh, telling me that they actually um need an intervention. Okay, but now take a look at the three. Uh, we have three, we have done the three C. It converges because the integral is pi and we got pi as well. But um, take note of the steps we have gone through. Okay, so now we continue to the next question. We continue to the next question. Yeah. Continue to the next question. Okay, yeah, we are we, we are here, please. We're here now. We're here now. Right. We are here. We are here. We are here. We are here. Right. We are here. We are here. We are here. Okay, okay. Right, we are here, we are here, we are here, we are here. Okay, but just deciding which one to do next. Uh, we're deciding which one to do next point. We want to decide which one to do next. Okay. Want to see which one to do next. Okay, good, good, good. We are seeing which one to do next. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Okay, now let's look at number four. Consider the integral of this one here from zero to one of dx of x to the four p. Prove that this integral converges to this if p is less than one and diverges if p is smaller than one. Let us look at this particular uh, integral here. So now you'd have to look at this involves something we call the P series, P series. And there's something called the P series test. P series test. 
Right, so let us take care of the P series test and see what we can do here. Right, and see what we can do here. Okay, in view of the P series test, we need to perform integration and see precisely then what to do in a situation like this one here. Right, and see exactly what to do in a situation like this. Okay, let us continue to check uh, what we do here. And see what we need to do here. Right. Okay, we continue. Okay. Let us pay particular attention to this and see what we can do. And see what we can do. Okay. What then would we have? Okay, if we consider this particular integral and look at the cases that this integral converges is P is less than one. So one way to do that, you can say, let P be less than one. So that's sort of case one. So if P is less than one, you'd have to look at this particular integral, but also, yes, please. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's fine. So that's okay, because, um, yeah, I've, I've tried to attend to your issue. So yeah, just check your messages, please. Okay. Okay, so we continue. Okay, yeah. So this is one dx of x to the power p. And then, obviously, what is the problem here? The problem here is the zero, because whenever x is zero, then it's, it's going to be undefined, yeah? So now we must be able to deal with the zero, and to deal with the zero, we do what? To deal with the zero, we will have the limit Epsilon approaches zero from the right. Dx over x to the p. Okay. So, which means that with the limit, Epsilon approaches zero from the right. Dx. You add one to that, which is one over one plus minus p x to the power minus p plus one. Uh huh. We have the limit, and we take everything into account. So we have the limit. which is dx over, which is the limit okay so now you can just take out the you can just take out the minus the one over that the one over the expression in terms of p which is minus p plus one. So what are we able to achieve out of this?
So this one, you can even take this uh, out. The one minus P, you can take it out because the constant. Minus this. Okay, let us check this out. So P is less than one. Meaning that P can be zero. Making this a one. And uh, if P is less than one, So now this is going to become what? One over one minus P. And then when you take the limit here, this is going to be exactly what? One. Because this one, epsilon approaches zero from the right, then it's going to become zero. One minus P. Hence, you have the integral from 0 to 1 of dx. Okay, so you continue. Right. Okay, let me just speak to this person. Just one minute, please. Hello? Yes, how are you? Yes, are you seeing the people there? Are you there in the in the seven seventeen, um, Martinez? Yes. Yeah, they are possibly coming out. Okay, bye. I'm sure. I'm sure they're the ones. Yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, sorry, I was just speaking to someone here. So that now at this point, what you have? You have then this one. Zero to one, then x to the power p. Um, so, Okay, so this becomes the answer. So obviously this is the case if, this is the integral if P is less than one. If P is less than one. But now we need to do the other one when P is greater or equal to one. So let's check that one out. So this one is case one. Next is case two. Case two, is let P be greater equal to one. Right, let P be greater equal to one. Sometimes he's not sure. She's not sure. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, just one minute. I'm trying to um see if this person is telling me this and that. Just one second. I'm trying to just see if I can give this person some attention for a minute. Um, let me see, 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 let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, right. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Um... 
Okay, 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 okay. Right, 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 right. I'm trying to see if... Uh, okay. Now, whenever we let P to be critical to 1, then what is the problem with this integral? So we need to integrate from 0 to 1. Um... which is x to the power p which is x to the power p Okay, but yeah, P is, uh, is greater equal to one. So in which case, let us, well, considering this case here. But the problem is still at zero first, because whenever X is zero, then this is undefined. So we need to do, take the limit. Is an improper integral of the second kind, second kind, which is undefined at a limit of integration. So you have the four that you have the following now. You then have the following here. You then have the following. Epsilon approaches zero from the right. And then you have this integral here, zero plus epsilon to one, and then x to the minus p dx. Which is the limit Okay, you have integrated this one and then now we have epsilon to one. Okay, you can even do it, we should have done it in one step and then broke it into two cases. There are many ways to do it anyway. Right, so we are here now, but now first let us substitute the limits of integration and in the meantime, we keep the limit. And then you substitute here, which is 1 to the minus p plus 1 minus epsilon to the minus p plus 1. So, this is what we have. Okay, now let's check what happens here. <clears throat> Whenever P is bigger or equal to one. Okay, this one, either way, like whenever P is one, it's gonna be one to the minus one plus one, one to the zero. Whenever P is bigger than one, it's gonna become what? Maybe P is bigger than one, maybe two. Minus two plus one, it's gonna be one to the, Minus one, giving us a one. This one, whenever P is one here, it's gonna be 
epsilon to the zero. P is two, it's gonna be minus two plus one, which is one over one over epsilon. If P is three, it's gonna be the epsilon to the minus three plus one, which is e to the minus two. E to the minus two. Okay, which is one over e squared. In other words, this is the limit. Epsilon approaches zero from the right. One minus P. So either way, this is one minus. One over epsilon to the P minus one. And this one, you put zero here. When this P is very large, you put zero here. My P is maybe 100. It will be 100 minus one, which is 99. Then if, you know, up this uh, epsilon to the power 99. And then if you put, if you put, uh, if you take the limit as epsilon approaches zero from the right, then it's gonna be one over zero. Okay, which is undefined infinity. But how is it infinity then when we uh, when epsilon approaches zero from the right? Obviously, it resembles a special type of function. I want to speak about a function, then we shall conclude. Please, just one second. Because the top, the top is a constant. Like when P is three, your when P is three, it's gonna be oh yeah, when P is two, make P two, and then it's gonna be one over E to the P minus one, which is one over two minus one, which is one over epsilon. What kind of a graph is this? This. So, when this is the case, this kind of graph, when epsilon approaches zero from the right, when we approach zero from the right, this is zero, the origin from the right, this graph approaches plus infinity. So that is, it's one over one minus that. One minus, so this thing here is gonna approach, it's gonna approach infinity. It's gonna approach plus infinity, but there's a negative thing. And therefore, this whole thing is infinity. This whole thing becomes infinity. So obviously it means therefore that these diverges. Diverges. This is called the there are those integrals that are like this that involve the P. Okay, there's something called the P series. Okay, yarn, because we're going to speak about the tests. P series would be one over n to the power p. Yeah, and um, it's a summation. So it's one over n to the power p. But you see, this summation is one to infinity. That is a summation. But this one here. There's a way of showing that obviously this P series has some divergence. There's some divergence whenever P is, is, is greater or equal to one, but whenever P is less than one, then this is what you have. 
Okay. So, yeah, think about this and make sure you understand this. Okay, because it's a, it's a huge, what you call the P series test, and then the, something called the integral test. The tests, the integral tests. So, we'll discuss the tests. Yeah, the integral tests will run up to infinity. You know, will run up to infinity. So, but obviously, this one is limited to one, but the integral test will run up to infinity. Um, infinity being the upper limit of, um, of integration there. Obviously, it, it becomes the fun improper integral. It, in, the, in case we use the integral test. Let's move on to the next question. Suppose F and G, so now we have number five. Suppose F and G are continuous functions. Um, Suppose f and g are continuous functions and that this is the order of the functions. The function f is less or equal to the function g, but the function f is bounded below by zero, above by g. So this f is a bounded function. For x greater or equal to a, we can... We can show the following. If this integral from a to infinity of f of x diverges, then the integral of g of x also diverges from a to infinity. If this integral here converges, then this integral here converges. And because f is less than or equal to g, then this integral here is also less or equal to the integral of g. Okay. So now, the couple of ways, obviously, we can use to, to do this particular integral. Okay, now I want us to look at this, but very, very carefully, this particular problem. This is our TART. It's exactly TART 5. And I want us to discuss it in some detail. We need to look at what this means. We need to look at what this means. Okay, this is called the comparison test. So now we're gonna use what we call the comparison test. But now we're gonna state the comparison test just a second. We're gonna state the comparison test in a second and then we shall use it to do this particular question here. Right, we shall have a statement of the comparison test. Okay. Right, 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 right. We shall have a, a statement of what you call the comparison test. Comparison test. Okay, 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 okay. First and second. So there are two of them, and then there's another one in um in two, four, eight. Okay, just one second, because I want us to discuss this here. Okay, there's something called the comparison test for integrals. Comparison. Comparison test for integrals. So we're just going to look at the statement and then we shall use it. Comparison test for integrals. Let f and g be defined be defined or yes please and then you have a to infinity and riemann and riemann integrable 
and Riemann integrable on A to B for every B bigger than A. Moreover, you suppose that the integral of f of x gx to all x critical to a and b from zero to that dx converges. Then the integral from a to infinity also converges. Okay, let us discuss this theorem called the comparison test for integrals. Let f and g be defined on this interval from a to infinity. And Riemann integrable on the closed interval from a to b for every b bigger than a. Suppose that f and g are ordered in that manner for all x bigger than a, which is exactly what has been said. This one here is a theorem. It's a theorem, the one I'm keeping in red. It's not, it's not just anything I'm writing. It's a theorem. This is the rule we use. Suppose, therefore, that the f and the g are ordered like this for all x be equal to a, and also this integral converges. If this is the case, then this integral converges. Okay, then this integral converges. Right, so ordinarily we will use uh, this particular result uh, to show these here. So now what we then do here, this is how we do it. Now, because we know this, So now we know that zero is less or equal to f of x is less or equal to g of x. Okay, this we know. For x bigger or equal to a. Then now we can be able to see that this is less or equal to, then you can take the integral of f of x dx from a to n which is less or equal to the integral from a to n of g of x, dx. This is true since zero is less or equal to f, less or equal to g. Okay. Right, right, right. Now, right, 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 right. Okay, I want us to look at this. So now we need to look at this and reason from this point. But this one diverges. So the F diverges. And this is what we...
We then say since. Okay, since this is the case, we come to this. The integral of a to n f of x dx. This one. Diverges. diverges as n approaches infinity. So this one either becomes infinity or becomes minus infinity. So it diverges. So what we're then getting is that we then have infinity is smaller than this. As n approaches infinity, of course. This n, either infinity or, either infinity or n, okay. But as n approaches infinity, then this n becomes infinity. But we are told that this integral of f of x, this one here, diverges as n approaches infinity. Hands. Okay, look. Now, if this one diverges, so the smaller one diverges. And this thing, this integral is greater than or equal to infinity. If it is greater or equal to infinity, it means also this one um, must diverge. Hence, hence the integral, this one, Hence, this integral here Hence, this integral here um, Because of this inequality It is Hence, this integral here is greater or equal to infinity. Right, meaning this integral, hence this integral is unbounded. It's unbounded. And then that's that's this integral from a to infinity of g of x dx Diverges. The fact that it is greater equal to infinity means that it is unbounded. You can say it is unbounded as n approaches infinity.
can write here. It is unbounded. S n approaches infinity. So we've proven this case here. Moreover, if the big one converges, so here, yeah, if the smaller one, if f of x, if f converges, uh, rather, if f diverges, then g diverges. But if g converges, the big one converges, then f also converges. Now, the integral of a to n. Okay, yeah, we're starting with, we start off, okay, now we are looking at the second bullet point, this one. The f that is this. Okay. So now we have this. And then we then say since this FG. Then you have the integral um. Since this, but this integral of g of x increases, increases to its limiting value. Limiting value as n approaches infinity. Okay, we can continue here and then say hands. Um, hence the integral from A to N of F of X dx is increasing. is increasing and bounded above. So because this G is increasing, but it is an, but it increases to its limiting value because it converges, this integral. So if this integral converges, you can imagine that this integral is uh, it, it, to its limiting value. So there is a, it has a limit. So you have therefore that you have the integral from a to n of f of x dx, but there is a limit, limit of this. So it means therefore this one is increasing and is bounded above. This is a bound because of the convergence of the g integral. So this is bounded above. Hence, the integral from A to infinity is a convergent integral. Is a convergent. Is a convergent. Is a convergent integral. 
Okay, try to follow the steps. Quite a very general proof, yeah? Convergent integral. Okay, this is how you generally be expected to prove this. Okay, this is the theorem. So I'm just following the proof of the theorem. It's a, it, 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 it's a theorem in the textbook. In the textbook. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not reinventing the wheel. This is the proof. From here, then you go like this. This is just a comment. Okay. What have we done in the second part? So now to prove the second bullet point, we then said we take, now the function f is a bounded function between zero and g. You take the integral both sides. Since f is this, the integral of g of x dx increases to its limiting value as n approaches infinity. Hence, this integral is increasing and bounded above. So this one, because this one is convergent, it increases to its limiting value by dint of it being convergent. If this is convergent, the g is convergent, it means that this is finite. You can say this. The g is convergent, it means it has a limiting value and therefore it's finite. Hence, this f now, this creates an equation like this, an inequality like this, which means that hence now the integral from a to n of f of x dx is increasing and bounded above also. And hence, this integral here of a to infinity is a convergent integral. That's what we want, that this converges. And this integral is the case. And this integral is the case. Okay, because this is convergent, f is convergent, and g is convergent, but f is less than or equal to g. Okay, look, you have f. Okay, so because of this, then you can take the integral from a to n, a to n. And this therefore implies that you can take the limit as n approaches infinity dx dx okay so then you have that this integral here this is the case and obviously you can just moreover say that therefore this is the case, yeah? This is the case, so that we have this. Because these both converge, it means therefore this, these integrals converge. These integrals converge. G converges being the biggest one, therefore F is also gonna converge. I think it's three past eight. I should should we take a break and then we'll continue later on? You let me know then when you are free again. What do we do? Please advise. Please advise. If we continue now, or oh, we, we okay. Let me check. Okay, let me check. Okay, good. We continue later. That's fine. So please, we depend on you. Then you let us know during the day, whenever you're free, then we can do other questions. Yeah, this was just a general proof, in which case, therefore, you need to just make sure that you repeat, 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 until you understand, until you internalize exactly sort of what's happening here. 
Okay, but we're going to make the recording available in the next couple of minutes. Thank you so much for joining us. It was awesome having this discussion. Um, Until later on, take care and goodbye. Goodbye. Right.